of all the stables in all the world, this poison wood foal had to walk into ours. But in actuality, we invited it in. Why? Because this poison pony is an SCP, and this channel is the ultimate SCP foundation magnet. Giddy up, my friends, as we've got horror fiction to discuss. Hello, and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel that looks to answer all manner of things. And at the moment, we are into, nay, we are obsessed with SCPs. I'm your host, Rebecca Felgate, and today I'm asking, what if SCP 805 escaped? Before I get into this video, why don't you guys let me know if you have ever ridden a horse? I feel like, actually, not that many people have. I did when I was really, really young, but it was kind of like my mum just shoving me on a horse, being like, let's put Rebecca on a horse and see what happens, rather than going on an equine adventure, which I think I'd be up for. Big powerful beast though. Do let me know your experiences in the comments section down below. Like this video, share it with a friend, and stick around to the end, because I'm going to be replying to some comments. Check out the links in the description box for our video sources, and also to all of the people that went into making this video. So, assuming SCP-805 was real, it is a young horse foal made entirely of poisonous wood. It has a hollow interior, but is inexplicably alive and sentient. The horse acts just like any other horse. It gallops around in a horsey way, and SCP-805 is said to be very, very friendly. It's drawn to humans and likes to be pet by them. It's playful and benevolent by all accounts. But of course, this isn't any horse. This is a desert designated SCP of the Euclid category, meaning it's unpredictable. Not only does the wooden horse have no organs, it does not need to eat or drink, ever. And on top of that, riding it or touching it in any way will poison you. How? Well, initially the reaction is rather like that of poison oak. The infected will start noticing red, itchy bumps on their skin. Only there's no remedy. The rash will get worse and worse and spread across the entire body. The rash will then turn a sickly brown-green colour, which is when those infected start experiencing excruciating pain. Slowly but surely, blood pressure rises and the body begins to reject its blood altogether. Blood vessels will burst and eyes will pop from their very sockets. Bones will widen and replace muscle. And finally, bone matter is turned into wood until a person resembles SCP-805 itself. Only they can't gallop like a happy horse. They are stuck where they are but have been observed creaking and attempting to move. Honestly, to me, this sounds like a death most horrible. And it isn't even really a death. It seems that most of the noises they generate come when SCP-805 is in the vicinity. While the infected are not thought to carry the same poison as SCP-805, they are still to be handled with caution. So as you can see, SCP-805 loose goose out and about an escape head would mean bad things. It would be akin to a monster on the loose despite its friendly demeanour. Luckily, in SCP lore, it is firmly locked up, in a classified sector of the Foundation. 805 is allowed out during daylight and is able to run free-ish under the care of Level 3 Clearance Foundation personnel wearing hazmat suits. The image on the Foundation website is of 805 standing in a dry looking field with trees in the background. Perhaps it would be possible to break containment by galloping away, by besting its containment staff. How it happens isn't so important, honestly. The real issue is, ah, 805 is loose. Run for cover. First and foremost, there would likely be a media of frenzy, an absolute sensation caused by the poisonous wood horse turning people into inanimate wood statues. It would be worldwide news headlines. We've never seen anything like this before. There'd be a frenzy around when the horse would strike next. Victims would see international television coverage. Scientists would be desperately trying to find a cure. People would theorize it was a monster, an alien an abomination sent from God. They would start believing in mythical monsters and worrying that nothing they knew before the news broke was real. People would stay well away from paddocks and open grasslands for fear of meeting a poisonous horse. People would start travelling more in cars so they could ram the wooden villain over if it had approached. The SCP Foundation would be outed and they would discover a poisonous horse is actually the least of their problems. Monsters from beyond their worst imaginations could be outed and literally society would collapse into chaos. People would think it would be the end of times. The doomsday has come. People would take to underground bunkers and hope for the best. Panic, panic, trample, trample, nightmare. But wait, doesn't this all sound a little bit dramatic? If the SCP does exist, and so too does the Foundation, then they would do anything in their power to recapture the escapee and silence the media. I've always considered the SCP Foundation to be a bit like the Men in Black. What you think you saw, you did not see, okay? So 
So with the media hushed, the real issue with 805 being loose would be pretty local. So far as we know, there is only one specimen of 805. It doesn't have any offspring, and it is a foal itself. But that is only what we can decipher from the foundation notes. Perhaps it can breed, in which case the issue would be much bigger. For now though, let's say 805 is just one SCP and it's out. We don't know where exactly the SCP foundation is, so it's hard to know where the horse would have escaped from, but many sources suggest that the foundation could be hidden beneath a lake in the American Midwest. So good people of North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Minnesota, Iowa, Missouri, Wisconsin, Illinois, Kansas, Michigan, Indiana and Ohio had better be on guard. I really feel like a wooden horse likely couldn't swim, so I really wouldn't worry too much if you lived anywhere other than the Americas, and let's be honest, I really don't think that SCP-805 is galloping down to Mexico anytime soon, so really this just is a United States and maybe even Canada problem. Unless big question here. Say 805 got out and was captured by the wrong people, could it be weaponized? We know that in the SCP lore there are terrorists, including the mysterious Sapphire. Could they use the horse as a weapon? Or worse, could they study its biological makeup and distill the poison from its wooden bones? If so, we could be in serious worldwide trouble. Say a terror cell did unleash a chemical attack on the poison. How low growing number of people turned into living screeching wood. A final question for you, what would we even do with the wooden victims? Would the foundation end up burning them alive in a savage bonfire so that the rest of the world never came cr across such an atrocity? Or would they all be kept contained in the foundation walls? Would they have any use? I suppose foundation scientists would keenly study them, but to the rest of the world, they would be assumed missing or dead. It seems like it would be rather like being in a state of paralysis. You know what's going on around you, and in this instance, you know that you've been turned to wood, but there's literally nothing you can do about it. It. To be honest, I might rather be burned, but honestly, how nightmarish. It's a dark turn. It seems for the best for all of us that 805 is contained, even if it does seem like it's such a nice friendly horse. So let's hope the foundation can keep the hoofer happy in its grassy prison, if not, the consequences could be dire. Well guys, that was that, thank you for tuning into this video. What would you do if 805 escaped? Also, have you ever ridden a horse? Where have you gone on your hoofy adventure? Let me know in the comments section down below. Before I go, I'm just going to read some comments from a recent SCP video I did. This was what if SCP-527 was real? This is what you had to say. Mario Madness said, SCP-527 is just a regular dude with a fish head really. He acts like a proper gentleman. He dresses like one too. Love me a fish wearing a top hat. Yes please, and I would say note the user avatar said, 527's fish head is only cosmetic. He doesn't breathe underwater. He has the same vocal cords. He has a human mind, he eats human food, and he has no other relation to fish in any way. How can he be cosmetic though? Because he's got gills! I need answers, answers, answers. How do his fish eyes work as well? I need to hear more. So I asked a question to you guys asking if you could have the head of any animal, what would you go for? I said I'd go for an eagle because, you know, pecking and ah. Timmy Dyer said, I'd go with the head of a great horned owl so I could strike fear into the hearts of those who spread evil and darkness. Kind of cliche, but I'm a cliche person. Mate, don't do yourself down. A great horned owl is an excellent suggestion. Maybe we can be like half human bird head friends. Ah. Okay, I have started making bird noises, so I think that's my time to leave. If you like this video, do leave a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Leave us a comment. We love it. Click on that big, beautiful notification bell so you never miss the big answer. I'm your host, Rebecca Felgate. I'll catch you in the next video. But until then, please do stay curious, stay alert, and never ever stop questioning.